In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The gospel reading that we heard this morning from the book of St. Luke, and I just mentioned that we will be celebrating his name's day, um, his feast day on uh, this coming Wednesday. But the gospel reading that we heard this morning from his book is a very familiar one. It is a story about the good seeds and the bad seeds. And Jesus seems to be saying to us in this passage that actually some people are not meant for the life of faithfulness to God. And he says this because in addition to the good seeds, there are bad seeds. In other words, good people as well as bad people. And while Jesus tells us that our faith is available to everybody, unfortunately not everybody is a good candidate for faith. Not everybody is a believer. We heard the words from Jesus when he spoke this parable this morning, and the gospel reading is in your bulletin as well. And it went like this, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some of the seeds fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns choked out the emerging plants. But finally, some of the seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundredfold. And Jesus entered this morning, uh, he ended this morning's gospel message with these words. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, we've all heard this gospel reading countless times, over and over and over again, I'm sure. But do we understand the context of what Jesus is saying to us? Certainly, he's making an analogy here. He's talking about seeds, but he's not talking about seeds. He's talking about people. Just as there are good seeds, and there are good seeds and bad seeds, there are good people and bad people. And Jesus is telling us that just as the seeds, there were four different ways that, that, that happened to these seeds. He's telling us that there are four basic responses to the gospel and how people respond to the seeds. The first is, I don't get it. In other words, it doesn't sink in. The second is, I got it, but it's not for me. The third is, I got it, I want it, but I'm too busy now. And the last is, I got it, I want it, and thank God for it. The gospel reading this morning gives us the opportunity to examine our own lives. And for the next few moments, to see just exactly which category we fit into. Let's begin with, I don't get it. You may recall a man by the name of Alan Bean, who was the commander of the Apollo 13, and was the fourth astronaut to ever walk on the moon. A friend asked him about the spiritual side of a ride through space. And the friend commented that some astronauts say that they felt as they were flying through space, that they felt the presence of God. And the friend asked this astronaut, he said, was that a common experience? And Ellen Bean was quiet for a moment, and then he replied, some did and some did not. Because deep space is no different from here in that regard. We always find what we expect to find. And Alan Bean was so right about that. Because we do find what we expect or we want to find. Some people never find God. 
primarily because they never look for God. They are satisfied with their lives just the way they are, or they are so unhappy with their lives that they don't see any hope. So why bother to look for him? Regardless, the thought of God rarely crosses their mind. And they don't understand, or they just don't get this religion business. And they let the opportunity to welcome God into their lives slip right on by. And this is like the first seeds that Jesus was talking about this morning. What about the second category of seeds that Jesus spoke about? Other people respond, yeah, I got it, but that's not for me. I tried it, I don't like it, so therefore I discard it. These are the people who have been exposed to the gospel. They think they understand the gospel in their own way of thinking, but consciously choose to go off in another direction. Perhaps they have a different view of God or the church and want religion to conform to their distorted view what Jesus should mean to them. There's a story about a small congregation that was facing some difficult decisions regarding their future and their direction. Its denomination was moving in a new direction and the members of the church were apprehensive about what those changes might mean for them. And so the pastor of this church said, let's pray about it. And let's meet once a week and seek God's direction. But to the pastor's dismay and his disappointment, what happened? Only one person showed up at that first initial meeting for the prayer meeting. And that was the president of the parish council. He may have felt obligated to be there. And they said, Pastor, we don't want to pray about it. We already know what we think about these new developments. And if we pray, there's a chance that God might change our minds. Sound familiar to some of us? Oftentimes we sit on committees and the same people comprise those committees and the result is the same. Stagnancy. I don't believe I've heard a better description of this. It's the I got it, but it's not for me mentality. We have our own definition of religion. And we want to change the church. And I don't think that people Jesus described as rocky soil are necessarily people who are outside the church. Because any time we resist God's will, any time that we purposely work to destroy the moral and sacred mission and undermine the church, we fall into that same category. It's amazing how often that we know what we ought to do or ought not to do, but we still do not act accordingly. And that's the second response to the gospel for the second seeds. I got it, but it's not for me. I don't want any part of it. And the third response that we heard in the gospel reading, the third seeds, I got it, I want it, but I'm too busy right now. Here is the category that many of us reside. As Orthodox Christians, we basically are good people. We truly are. We do believe in the good news of Christ. We think we do treasure our faith. But our commitment to Christ is not to get into the middle, but to stay on the peripheral, to stay on the edge. Like when someone who's afraid of the water stays at the edge of the pool and just dips his or her toe into the water. We have many priorities in our life and our faith is but 
only one of those priorities and in some instances actually stands in the way of what we truly want to do, which is the opposite. And with most people in this category, we basically do want to do everything so well. Because these people want to provide our, for our families and excel in our work. We want to make sure our children are able to participate in all kinds of extracurricular activities. And we know that we need to look after our aging parents. And soon we find the list suddenly becomes so long, so overwhelming, and then along comes this thing called religion. And our rationale is, oh well, it will just have to take its place in line with all of the other demands that are placed on me. And how did Jesus describe the plight of those seeds in this third category? He described it, meaning us, so well when he said that other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. It's easy to feel choked, isn't it? By our many responsibilities. We become so overwhelmed at times. But our church through the gospel lesson tells us there is a solution. And that solution is to find such a center of peace for our lives that we no longer have to feel suffocated by life. Nor do we have any, any nor do we any longer have to hurry frantically through life. Finally, my dear friends, there's a fourth category of seeds that Jesus was talking about in the gospel from St. Luke. A response that gives us hope for a life of faith. It's I got it, I want it, and thank God for it. There are people, and Jesus calls them good soil, who are receptive to the good news of Jesus Christ. They understand that faith is not meant to be an add-on, not an I'll follow my faith as long as I agree with it, and it, it does according to what I expect of it. It is not a burden you carry in addition to other burdens. When we open ourselves to Jesus Christ and say to him, all I am, all I have, and all I hope to be, I give to you. It takes the me out of it, and it places the emphasis on where it belongs, at the feet of Christ. We then discover a sudden lifting of all of our burdens and place them, as I said, before the feet of our Lord. And then we can restructure our priorities according to our faith commitment. So my brothers and sisters, yes, this is a very famous gospel reading that we've all heard, I'm sure, hundreds of times. This morning's gospel lesson gives us four responses to the life of faith. The seeds that fell on the path and were devoured by the birds, the response is, I don't get it. The seeds that fell on rocky ground with poor soil, the response by us is, I got it, but it certainly isn't something that I want. It's not for me. And the third set of seeds that fell among the thorns, the response by many of us is, I got it, I want it, but I'm just too busy now to deal with it. And then finally, our Lord tells us about the fourth group of seeds. The good seeds that fell among the good and fertile soil. And the joyous response is, I got it, I want it, and thank God for it. Each one of us falls into one of those categories. And we could fool ourselves into thinking we belong in one category when we know down deep that we probably belong in another. But God knows all. God sees all. And you are the real fool to think otherwise. Only one of these responses, however, will bring us life everlasting and truly define us as followers and stewards of our Lord. 
remember how our Lord ended this morning's gospel reading. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen.